officers. Uh, I got a call from the Toronto police. They were uh, going to a biker clubhouse in downtown Toronto, and they were arresting a bunch of guys for criminal activity. And in the warehouse, they had two exotic animals. They had a full-grown 140-pound mountain lion who was being used as a guard cap for the drug industry. And they had a snake, so big, just to put this in perspective. If you envision for a moment the snake's tail starting at that back wall over there, the snake was about, about this one, 23 feet long. It was as big around as a soccer ball and weighed more than I do. Its name was Julius Caesar. <laughs> now, we went in, we confiscated those two animals, the big cat and the snake, we took them back to our wildlife center. This is what I would do, I would house them until court proceedings went through, and then inevitably when they wouldn't get them back, I'd donate them to credible zoos or wildlife centers where they had resources to you know, look after the property. But here's where the story gets kind of scary. Two weeks after receiving that big snake, there was an unfortunate incident that happened in front of my wildlife center. There was a deer stricken on the road and killed by cars. What we talk about sometimes animals get hit by cars on the road. That's pretty sad. But the wildlife authorities in uh, Ontario would bring in these roadkill deer and other animals to our wildlife center as good food for our wolves and the other animals that we we're looking after. It was great natural food for them. So we took this deer, like a small deer, about 90 pounds, and we fed it to the big snake. And the snake swallowed the whole deer whole. Three hours to get down three weeks to digest, and it didn't eat again for over three months. And the scary thing is, according to the police officer who was on scene that day when we confiscated the animals, the man that owned that snake used to bathe it in the bathtub with his three-year-old little girl. <laughs> Unbelievable. And the big cat, by the way, its name was Amber. And Amber was uh, not treated very well. Uh, people were very aggressive with her, trying to keep her aggressive as a guard cat. And the man that was abusing her had a big beard. And, and, and as did I, I had a big, I shaved my beard off because I identified with that big beard and, and me as, as the abuser. And the problem with Amber is even when the police determined that those people would not get those animals back, the zoos didn't want Amber. She was too aggressive. And she would charge defensively because this is all she knew. So I spent two years trying to bring Amber the mountain lion around to make her used to people so that I could donate her to an appropriate zoo. And in that time, we developed a pretty close relationship. In fact, so close that when I was in there interacting with Amber, when my wife would walk by, the cat would kiss at my wife. And one day, when I was cleaning up after her, this big cat in her enclosure, she leaped across her enclosure, 15 feet, grabbed me by the scuff of the neck, and hauled me to the ground. Now, this wasn't a malicious attack. She thought I might make a pretty good boyfriend for her. <laughs> and the mating rituals of Cougar can be pretty intense sometimes. Well, I'm scuffed back there. I let her yell one way, she got the other way, I don't know who more frightened. I learned a valuable lesson. We're not designed to get around with 140 pound mountain lion this way. At that point, I knew she enjoyed people's company. I was able to donate her to a credible zoo and they paired her up with another mountain lion who probably appreciated her advances. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how did everybody do it here? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think if I had my uh, uh, glove on for me, would be hopping on and It's interesting, uh, back at our uh, wildlife hospital where Corby is housed in a big, big indoor outdoor enclosure, we had cameras on them the whole time. And um, during the day, we'd hear them tortling and talking and practicing words and doing all these things. You see them on camera doing that stuff. But as soon as you come around the corner, they're like, nothing to hear here. Corby does. Yeah. Corby has a, a vocabulary at this point. Only two years old. It takes a little while to kind of get into the groove. Uh, Corby can say half a dozen or eight words. And uh, not on cue yet, but we're working on that. And I'm pretty sure the next word they're going to say it because Corby's had so many pictures taken of them, they're going to start saying cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, sometimes uh, we have to be careful when we're talking about Corby because, again, they're great mimics, right? They can pick things up. I once had a, a parrot 
um, an expat that I was in the middle of the school presentation. I had no idea that her could talk. In the middle of the presentation, I was introducing it. It stood up, and, and we thought his name was Tiki. And it stood up and went, Tequila. <laughs> See, I need to be careful. Uh, and actually, Corby has learned some interesting words. Would you like to share something that you, 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 you accidentally yeah. taught Corby? <laughs> fully, um, fully have to admit that it was myself, because Corby will say things in your own voice back to you. So there's absolutely no way to deny who's teaching Corby what. Um, so I like to go into Corby's enclosure. We also bring uh, them into the office and hang out sometimes. Um, and I usually talk quite a bit. Um, I just want them to feel comfortable like around talking. Obviously, we do presentations. And you know, I just I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just saying words to get them used to it. Um, so I was saying, ain't no thing, chicken wing. And immediately, Corby, like, I swear, felt that I shouldn't have said that. So I was like, and they were like, chicken wing. <laughs> my own voice. So I didn't know if that was quite an appropriate uh, word for a fellow bird to be talking about bird as food. But yeah, I, they did learn that. <laughs>